What are these RBI's concerns? Uh, let's go across uh, to Jayjit Bhattacharya, who is joining us uh, this morning. He is the president of the Center for Digital Economic Policy Research. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. What does dollarization of the economy mean for the benefit of our viewers and how legitimate are RBI's concerns? It means is that you can run the economy on currency which is not controlled by RBI. Right. So, um, you know, if you don't print rupee, why don't we use dollar? It's a stable currency. Why don't we use uh, dollar to buy our vegetables and so on and so forth? Now, um, clearly, there's a problem in using foreign currency to run your economy. You don't have control over the currency. So, for example, in the last two years, when you had COVID, there had to be a, uh, a monetary policy intervention done to make sure that the, that the economy continues to run. And that leads to inflation, but the economy survives. The jobs of people survive and overall we are able to move forward. But when you don't have control over the, the, the currency, such as a dollar being the currency, you don't have control over these tools and therefore the, 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 the economy can go into a free fall and sink. Now, when you start using cryptocurrencies, these are currencies which are actually uh, dollar denominated. And also, they none of them are Indian currencies. They are created by somebody else. Yes. Uh, mostly American, and even if it's created somewhere, uh, you know, in a non-American country, the point is that the RBI and the Indian government does not have control over these currencies, so there is no monetary tool available to save the economy when we are in that situation. Yes. Uh, uh, Jajit, uh, Indian government is also wary of cryptocurrencies. You know, now the RBI officials are saying that uh, cryptocurrencies can replace a part of the monetary system and also undermine RBI's capacity to regulate the flow of money in the system. Are there any mitigating measures put in place by the crypto players that can reduce this, these risks and also the risks uh, that the government has cited of money laundering and terror financing? So the point is the moment you put in these checks and balances such as KYC, know your customer, uh, CFT which is uh, stopping uh, terror funding and so on and so forth, then the cryptocurrency becomes as cumbersome as a fiat currency. Then the question comes in as to why are we even using cryptocurrency? The reason cryptocurrency is largely being used now is because it, it provides ease of transaction and it provides anonymity, even though some people may challenge that crypto is on blockchain, so there is no anonymity. Well, the ability to crack that is not lying with the Indian government. The US government can crack that. Indian government does not have the ability to crack and figure out who is owning what cryptocurrency, and therefore it provides anonymity. Once you have anonymity, you can therefore do transactions which you don't want the normal banking system to see which are clearly uh, largely illegal transactions or speculating on a, a currency which is not really a currency. It's, a, it's an asset which uh, does not have any backing at all. And therefore, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, um, not a currency that can be used or it's not a, a, a asset that can be used uh, and it's extremely destabilizing for the Indian government. Um, so uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, when you have um, you know, large... Um, um, uh, you know, Ponzi schemes coming in. I'm dithering to say the word Ponzi scheme because there are many who will say that the value is in the eyes of the beholder. Now, that happens when it's a piece of art and therefore a few people believe yeah. that there is some value to that uh, particular art. But if there are millions who think that something which does not fundamentally have any value behind it does have value behind it, there's a significant problem. Uh, the RBI director also had earlier uh, referred to the Ponzi scheme of the tulips, which happened in the 17th century. And his response was that, look, the crypto does not even have a tulip behind it. And therefore, you see there's been a bloodbath in the market uh, where about um, you know, $300 million have been wiped out, $300 billion have been wiped out from the market, which to give you a perspective is larger than the total economy of Pakistan. So an entire country's economy have been wiped out in the bloodbath that happened in the uh, cryptocurrency market, which shows how unstable it is and, and why not having an asset backup is a huge problem for right. dealing with something like a cryptocurrency. Let me understand what you're saying. Are you saying that uh, the, the, there's now crypto tax, this new rule to tackle crypto tax evasion with crypto companies asked to store KYC information and financial transaction of customers for five years. Are you saying that these are cumbersome? Uh, this, this will make the entire uh, crypto market cumbersome? Or do you think these are the steps in the right direction, a positive step towards regulation? Well, I mean, uh, the point is that this is needed for that matter, right? And it is going to make it cumbersome, the same as it with fiat currency. You know, what if we remove all checks and balances on rupee being traded? Uh, why should anybody use cryptocurrency and not use rupee? Why will you not use UPI and use crypto to make a transaction? UPI is instantaneous, crypto is not instantaneous. 
So uh, to bring in parity in terms of um, the safety and security of these transactions, it is for sure needed to have KYC and uh, CFT. But do keep in mind that that KYC and CFT is only being imposed by the Indian uh, crypto exchanges. Um, the rest of the exchanges globally are not under the sovereignty of the Indian government. And therefore, you can buy cryptos from elsewhere, sell it in India or the other way around. And you can buy cryptos in India and do trade in a foreign crypto uh, exchange. Uh, and therefore, you can still do money laundering. You can still do uh, uh, financing of terror. And you can still buy guns and drugs with that money uh, without any uh, oversight of the Indian government. The Indian government yes. has oversight and jurisdiction of only the entities that are there in India, not beyond that. Whereas crypto is a, uh, is, so is a global phenomenon in that sense. And Sorry. therefore, you can do transactions anywhere else in the world. So, Jajit, is the onus on the crypto players to put in these mitigating measures to allay the concerns of the government? Or can the government do something? Well, it has to be uh, an oversight of the government. So if you look, if you draw a parallel with, let's say, the banking system, it is under RBI's uh, jurisdiction and RBI's direction that the KYC standards are put into place. You know, what constitutes KYC? Does a, a passport constitute uh, KYC? If I put in the passport of uh, Grenada, is that a good enough KYC? Yes. Or do I need to be an Indian citizen? There'll be 20 questions in terms of what is KYC. So clearly... The Indian government, um, if it if it wants to really put in KYC, has to come out with more concrete uh, rules and regulations of KYC. And once you start doing it, it will be very clear that you need to have a global organization to implement, just like what you have in regular transaction, where there are organizations such as SWIFT, which already enable six-point KYCs to be put in along with the money. So the KYC flows with the money, and therefore those transactions are therefore processed. Um, so, so both the Indian government and um, some kind of a global consortium has to come in and put this uh, these principles in place. Uh, unilaterally, the, the Indian government will not be in a position to put it. Yes. All right. So interesting suggestions there, uh, Jajit. Last couple of questions. Let's return to what RBI officials have said. They have said, according to sources, that it will also have a negative impact on the banking system as these being attractive assets, people may invest their hard-earned savings in these currencies. Is this concern genuine or can banks not make their policies more competitive? No, this is actually very worrisome because of the point I mentioned. What is it that's backing the cryptocurrencies? Uh, right? There is, is there a large economy that is uh, backing it? Now, as I've always argued in my you know, various writings and articles, that dollar was perhaps the first cryptocurrency in the sense that it was not backed by an actual asset. But it was, it was backed by the, the global energy trade and was backed by the US trade and the US economy. And, and that's huge. Um, but that is not the case in terms of crypto. Largely, any real transaction that's happening is on uh, on the dark net, on things that are not legal in nature. Because if you are if you want to buy something legal in nature, you will just use a, a digital currency, which is much cheaper. Uh, because you have for keep in mind, for every transaction you're doing in crypto, you also have to pay what is called the gas price, and that makes the transaction quite expensive. So why do you want to go through those transactions and pay the gas price? when you can simply use a UPI payment to, uh, to, to make the payment. And so it's um, extremely worrisome if people move their money into crypto. And um, as you, you know, mentioned in the beginning, there are about 15 to 20 million people in India who are using crypto. Uh, and if they are even spending $50 yes. on an average, we have about a billion dollar um, of Indian money lying out there, sold to uh, others uh, who made these, you know, just bunch of codes. Uh, and we sold them in hard currency. We, we exchanged US dollar uh, against these rupees to pay for these cryptos. That's extremely worrisome. So if people move their money from banks into cryptos, um, the, the currencies, the cryptocurrency had fallen by 80% in one week. Um, and again, there was an equivalent of $300 billion mm. wiped out from the market. So it will be extremely worrisome if Indian household yeah. savings are put into cryptos. It will lead to a lot of um, uh, heartburn in India. And... Um, you know, if I might just add, uh, it'll lead to, you know, people um, opting for, for for suicide and so on and so forth, which has uh, been happening quite often in India in such circumstances. Yeah, those are genuine concerns, uh, Jajit. Uh, but as you said, there are about 15 to 20 million crypto investors. We've been talking about that. Uh, so uh, the RBI has concerns, the government has concerns. Can they do away with cryptocurrency or do they have to regulate it and learn to live with it? What's the big picture of cryptocurrency going forward in India? So from the government side, as uh, based on our conversations with the government for the last couple of years, 
Um, it is it is um, an issue that needs to be tackled. Uh, there's still no clarity for the reason you mentioned. Before the Supreme Court overturned the RBI directive of stopping all transactions on crypto, um, there was very little investment into crypto from the Indian side and therefore it was manageable. Um, once the, the RBI allowed um, the banks to actually enable crypto transactions to happen, uh, we suddenly have uh, 15 to 20 million people investing their uh, money into it. And these are typically 20 something uh, people who do not understand the background of the cryptos. They are investing into it because they have heard that you get incredible returns out of it. Now, if nobody is working, nobody is creating any value out of it, how do you get incredible returns out of it? Uh, you'll get incredible returns when you can sell that currency to somebody else or you know that Bitcoin or that crypto to somebody else uh, who believes there is value. And at some point in time, that belief will shatter, like what is happening at this uh, current moment where the cryptos are in a free fall. Even cryptos which are backed by dollar, which are called stable coins, uh, which had one-to-one -one linkage between dollar and the crypto, uh, they suddenly dropped to nothing. They have, you know, the, something that was selling at seventy dollars now selling at twenty cents. That's a huge fall in value. So it is um, yes. uh, of concern for the government. Right. Is there a way out? Uh, it is kind of a nuisance value at this stage, if I can paraphrase it. And um, and therefore, it is for the government to ensure that mm -hmm. that less number of people get hurt in India uh, because of cryptocurrencies.